Welcome. <clears throat> Day one, night two, three, four, something. I don't remember. Making Songbringer. This is a procedurally generated Zelda like game. And today I'm working on procedurally generating ground textures. So, um, my goal for all this is to be able to have um, a ground texture that can blend with other colors. So I noticed last night when I started creating a new jungle tile set, you can see these sort of like raw palm tree-ish. I haven't even finished the leaves on them, but um, you can tell that to get that whole jungle look, it would be a lot better if this were using a green floor color. Let me show you, show you what I mean. If I set this, this floor color to be green, it's not gonna be the right hue. Or I mean, it's not gonna be the right saturation of value quite. Yeah, because I haven't dialed that in. What's up, Peta? However, if I set this to green, it will it will look a lot more jungly. So, like I said, this is totally the wrong value and saturation for this ground, but um, but it already looks a lot more jungly than the brown color. So, what's up, you guys? Jonah one nine, Momir. Yo. So my, yeah, that's my goal today is to keep on working on this procedural ground texture generator and make it so it can blend two different areas together. So if one area is brown, one area is green, it'll blend them together. Yeah, it's getting better. It's getting better. I mean, it's still got a long ways to go. It looks slippery. <laughs> hey, sweet. Thanks, Zybook. Appreciate that so much. Seriously. Every one of these pre-orders is going to help get the game better for its launch. So, as it stands right now, I have enough funds to make it till about December. So I'll probably have to launch in either December or January and then keep on releasing free updates. But, all these pre-orders help me to get maybe into February or March and just make the game that much better before it's actually launched. Yeah, cheers. I appreciate you, and I'm sure there's tons of other people that appreciate you, too, for doing that. Cheers. And, um, yeah, I would appreciate you anyways, no matter what, but that really helps, so thanks. Um, okay, so, yeah, today's task is procedurally generating ground textures. <clears throat> thanks, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. So, first I want to dial in the right hue and saturation. I've already got it kind of doing this using the purlin noise for the terrain so it kind of gets a these like cool curves to it um, but first I want to make it so it looks exactly like the same saturation and value range of my existing texture so I'm going to take a screenshot right here and open this up in Photoshop and here's a giant Perlin noise I generated from, I was playing around with Perlin noise, it was just huge. You can see when I zoom in, it kind of shows you how big this actually is. But yeah, I'm, I kind of got stuck on the Perlin noise right now, so I gotta, I'm gotta i gonna switch to a different task. And So it looks pretty good as it is right here, but if I, if I increase that size and I use this Perlin noise, it all looks bad. It doesn't look that good, so this is a really tiny Perlin noise actually. So, but anyways, what I want to want to work on now is that that saturation value. So, uh, I'm gonna even close this Perlin noise so it doesn't distract me. And here, okay, here's a screenshot I took before I did anything. So, I'm gonna look at the actual. We've got a saturation value here of 51 and a brightness of about 65. And this is the brightest part of this texture right here in the middle. So, and it looks pretty good. I like this ground a lot. This is a custom pixeled ground. So here is this. Okay, I can already see that it's... Um, oh, did I do this backwards? I think that's supposed to be the lowest point, and these are supposed to be higher points. I think I did. Okay. But anyways, this... It looks like it needs to be saturated a little bit more and a little bit more value, too. So... Let's grab that color. First of all, let's swap this. So we'll do plus 
instead of minus on this little addition. So hopefully that makes it. Let's see if that works. I want the I want the those higher bits of terrain to be lighter colored. Uh, no, it's not a bump map. It's procedurally generated texture. So let me show you. I'll show you in detail here in a sec after I run this. Uh, that's that's right here, I think. But now these edges look weird. So uh, how about this? If F Yeah, so what it what it's basically doing here to generate this texture is it goes in and creates some data, right? It just determines how big this texture needs to be, creates the the byte array to hold all that data. And then it goes through and yeah, oh, there we go. Okay, now we got wait, no. That didn't flip it right. Yeah, so then it goes, it loops over the whole size of that, that, that terrain or that, that ground texture. And for each pixel, it actually goes and creates each pixel. And then it goes and creates a texture to hold that. So it takes all that pixel data, right? And creates a texture. This is a Cocos 2DX um, texture here that's creating. And then it makes sure that it's, al it's alias, not anti-alias. Anti-aliasing is just like the bane of all pixel art. So and then it just goes and creates an entity after it does that, and it creates the entity with that texture. So it creates a ground entity that holds that procedurally generated texture. So that's that's really it. It's it's like bump mapping. It's a lot like bump mapping, but it's not technically. So yeah, let's just let first let's dial in the saturation. So the color here is 255, 190, 99. I can't be right. Oh, 99. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's on it's done with the CPU before it ever renders the uh, the area. It's it's just pre-computing sort of a ground texture per area. So every time it goes to a new area, it creates a new ground texture and lets go of the old area's ground texture after it's done. Okay, so I want this to be, I'm going to take the saturation up to 63. Now let's pick it even 64. We'll go 255, 187, 92. Oh, and I want it to be a little brighter too, so I could do that here. I might as well do it in the color though. So this was um, this brightest part. Was a brightness of 65. Hello, cards of Max. Welcome to the stream, man. And this brightest part here was 55. So that's a whole 10% brightness. Let's see what happens if I. Oh, we've already got this thing at full brightness. Okay, yeah, we'll have to do it in code. I'm using C. 255, 187.92. All right, and let's do a whole 0.6 for how bright it is. All right, let's run it, see if that's all dialing it in so it's a little more. I want this to be the same saturation values it used to be. All right, it's definitely a lot brighter, but still doing that weird swap. See if we, that made it. I'm 
Okay, so I'm just going to ignore this part right here. I don't know why that's all that's all swapping so weird. But oh well. Okay, so now I want to check and see if that new texture came out better closer to what Yeah. Okay, here's the old one. This is Coco's 2DX. It's and all this information's right there on the the fact, man. So if you go to uh um, just click on the info for the stream. It's got lots of these kind of details and stuff. But yeah, I use Cocos 2DX. Okay, this feels too bright. It looks like it really brightened it too much. Let's see. This brightest part here. Maybe there. Yeah, it's a 75 now. How the heck did that happen? Well, let's try 0.55 then. I'm kind of eager to get on to the, the part where it's blending two colors together. Oh, what's up? Why is it still doing the opposite? Yeah. Yeah, it does, right? If it were a, maybe a tiny bit more yellowish. It's kind of a bit too orange. Okay. Let's take that. Now we got a brightness of 69. How did it get too bright? That is this. If I set that to 0.5, back to 0.50, what it was. Maybe it had to do with this color. Sixty-four, sixty-five. Wow! Suddenly, it's just working, and it is a tiny bit too saturated. So I wanted this to go back down to sixty-three, maybe sixty-two, even. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and go to sixty-two because, if anything, it should be less saturated. Okay, two fifty-five, one eighty-nine, ninety-seven. Seems like a big difference in the saturation there. No, but it's not. It's exactly right. 51, 64. And this one at its brightest was about 51, 64, 65. Same exact thing. Okay, let's see where this thing gets to its darkest. It's right here. And that's about a brightness of 40. This one's a brightness of 44. Uh, but that's also because, yeah. Let me 
just look at this overall. Oh, I forgot there's flames here too, so that changes things a lot. If anything, it just needs to jitter out. So this, this texture is kind of nice because I jittered it all by hand and stuff like that and made it look really dirty. For I kind of forced it to look dirty. And this one, it's just that these curves are a bit too smooth. So I'll need to work on a better algorithm that makes them a little less perfectly smooth like this. Um, and let's check on one more thing. Let's go to this brighter part here. And look at the difference in the values. So this one's brightness of 65. And this one's a brightness of 64. That's, that's about right. Okay. Well, okay, yeah. This is about right for its saturation value for now. Um, let me dial in a green color now. This one has a saturation of 29, brightness of 32. So its brightness could go way up, even its saturation. I just realized what this is. So int t equals that. Let's see if that did it. I'm trying to get that so that the higher parts of the terrain are the ones that are lighter but yet it still has that nice uh, shadow between the two terrain types. Yeah. I mean, except for here. Ah, there we go. Cool. So now this patch right here is light. Goes down to here. This one's darkest. That's kind of what I was going for. Okay, so let's lighten up this color. 106, 128, 93. Saturate a little more. I'm gonna, only, I'm gonna saturate it a little bit at a time because I find that saturation can quickly get out of hand. Let's brighten it up. One thirty nine, one seventy nine, one sixteen. Yeah, well, a lot of things aren't matching. Even the bike isn't matching. But yeah, 
first I have to get that this hue and saturation right and then play with the other art and stuff. Okay, now that's just super bright. Really looks weird. And too saturated. Wow, this color really does not want to be so bright. One fifteen, one forty one, ninety nine. I guess it could go a little brighter. Yeah, a little brighter than that. One twenty four, one fifty two, one oh seven. Weird. Shader turned that into a, a bright spot. Ah. Uh. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe I'll play with this hue a little bit. Yet yeah, less yellow. More like a deeper green. Let's try that. 102. No, it's not overflowing. Flowing. It's purpose purposefully doing that. It's an effect um, similar to Photoshop's um, color burn. So. When I first created my shader for doing that, that whole lighting and everything, um, I used this one, um, uh, it was this one Stack Overflow post that talked about how to do the math for all the Photoshop shaders. So, or for their level, for their layer blends. So like, you've got like all these different kind of layer blends you could do, like darken, multiply, color burn, lighten. And so it gave you the equations for all of these. And even they weren't quite right. It, when I when I put them in, I'm like, nah, that's not really soft light or whatever. But I used a blend of several different um, layer effects and put that into a shader. And so I'm pretty sure it's the color burn one that does that. Which kind of give, it gives the whole game kind of a cool effect. But some per particular things like that, I didn't I didn't I kind of felt iffy about that one. One hundred two, one forty eight, one hundred five. This one's more green. This will help it distinguish it from the the, the plants that are around it. The plants are a little more yellow in their hue. Uh, 
Okay, yeah, that is looking better. But it's too saturated now. Way too saturated. So delicate. 111, 148, 113. Hey, what's up, Nano? <laughs> Hello. How you doing today? That's funny. You should start doing that every time you join a stream. Just say bye to start with. Uh, trying to decide if that's too saturated or not saturated enough. The grass, the actual grass textures that are on top are looking kind of weird now. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'll finish dialing this one in later. Okay. <clears throat> I'm working on procedurally generating the ground texture. So this, this is a procedurally generated texture algorithm. I'm basically just, I started with creating a data array that holds all the, the, the bytes for the colors, right? And then I loop over every pixel and create its, I set each pixel's color individually. And then I go and I create a texture based on those pixels and then apply it to the ground entity. So that's, that's basically how it's working. This is a procedurally generated texture algorithm. I've just been creating today because what I want to do is be able to blend to like let's say this screen right here to start with is a maybe a brown right it has like brown ground and then the screen say right to the to the right of it has a green ground texture um, I want to be able to have a patch of the green blend into the brown so it, it's smooth as we transition and I also want to do these cool like height effects like this, maybe with some Perlin noise or some other kind of algorithm. So I, I need to make this better, but the whole point is procedurally generating a ground texture in, in the end is going to be really cool. Not only can I do that, but I can I can make it so the player actually steps down into these gap like this, and he'll step up when he goes to things like this. So it's going to be cool. But it's just kind of, you're seeing it right now in the ugly phase. It's really not looking that good yet. So um, the next thing I want to do is start being able to blend them. And I'm going to keep it really simple at first by just saying, okay, every other screen is brown and green. So later on, that will be based on these actual, the way that it generates the entire world, right? Some of these are darker greens, some of these are brown. Some of them are going to be silver, some of them are going to be yellow too as well, so it'll be like yellow deserts. Some of them are more light green. So there's a lot of different colors. And this way too I can do I can do more alien worlds, right? Let's say I want to have like a pink world or a purple world or something like that. You can do that. Cool. Okay, well I'm glad you like it. It's I think it really needs a lot of work, but um, at least it's, if you like it, it must be on the right track, so that's cool. Um, okay, so I'm going to start with just one edge. No, I need to do at least, at least a west and an east edge. Okay. So what I'm thinking is it will go... It will start, this algorithm will start like this. It'll, it'll say, okay, this area is brown, the next area is green. Just keep it really simple at first. And then say from about here on the screen or the middle, of the, around the middle of the screen, it'll start with an algorithm that, that says, okay, I'm going to randomly go in and out, kind of jagging out sort of a sine wave shaped path. I 
Okay, so let's give it a color and a next color. So, auto color equals, and we'll do color 3B, color, this thing is 255, 189, 97. Yo, what's up, Knight? Thanks, man. I'm glad you said that. I still think it needs a lot of work myself. Like, it kind of looks ugly to me, but but it's getting there. It's okay. I'm gonna start this. This this is not how this will end up. But I find I find frequently when I'm creating algorithms like this, I have no clue how they will end up. I just have to start it however the heck I can think up, you know, at the time. So I know. It's weird programming that way because I know this is not how I want it, but it's the only way I can think of to start with. So I just, that's the way I code a lot. I start by doing it. I use the WTF method. When it doesn't work, I just go try something else. Okay, so uh, and this, is, this is where we'll actually change each area's color. So if area pause.x plus area pause dot y mod two equals zero then we're going to swap the colors all right okay so now we're setting the color color to r color to g color to b Have I tried writing unit tests beforehand? No, I don't like writing unit tests. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm I'm true to my word. I, I seriously believe that you shouldn't do things that you're not excited about, especially in game development. Game development should be fun. So, you know, for some people, unit tests are an exciting thing. That's great, but for me, they're not. And I think they're, for me at least, they're kind of a waste of time. So that's why I don't do them. Okay, so this should make it so one area is brown, the next one's green. All right, cool. We've got this starting brown, and this one's green. Okay, so now the goal is to get these to blend together smoothly by putting some green here and some... Oh, I guess you wouldn't put brown there. Yeah, I guess just some green here. Oh, well, it is a little more simple than I was thinking. Okay, so... I guess this will be a separate loop. We'll start at a quarter of the size Y. Yeah, exactly. But that's the thing, I don't know what I want. I don't know how this will end up. And so this is this is kind of my way of writing unit tests. Is that, is I don't know, I don't even know where the heck I'm gonna go with this. So I just fumble around until I get it to work. I know that's that's probably not the most awesome programmer way to do it, but it works for me. Oh, all right. Yeah, I know, right? It's like we all. I I frequently feel like I should do things a certain way, but I finally realized that I'm never going to. So what's the point in trying to trick myself into, you know, doing it that way? What's up, PMC?
Okay, so this is where we'll create some kind of blend. Um, let's do an X diff, something like this. Start at zero. Each time we do we get to here, we'll go if the x diff no no if the y is less than size over two, we're gonna add to the x diff. So we'll get a random number. DRAND F Yeah, I'll give that as a float. So yeah, we got a random number. And I want this to be more and more of a jump as it goes. Uh, sorry, man. I, I've done one tiny Lua project, so I don't, I, I know only the basics myself. But maybe somebody else here can. You should probably post what you're what you want help with. That'll help people kind of get engaged a little bit. And I might even be able to help too. Um Okay, so the first get so it's gonna jump, 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 and then jump back, 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 depending on its random number. Uh, so the delta or max delta or something like that. Let's just set it to be ten for now. Yeah, let's just do it like that. Okay. So now the x delta plus equals d times r. Otherwise, the x delta minus equals d times r. This is size y. What's up, Toby Peters? Oh no, yeah, I definitely do not want to do a bl a gradient. Yeah, that's not what I'm. That's not the look I'm going for for this. I want, if anything, I want it to be just a like. Let me try and show you what I'm talking about. Like something like this, right? It's like a dirt path. And so using a gradient would look really not very pixel arty. Are you feeling me? Um, because there's already a gradient being applied on top as well with the shader. So it's a good thought. It would be very simple, right? It would be a very nice, simple algorithm just to do a gradient, but. It's not not a, it's not the aesthetic. Attempt to index global. Man, wish I could help you with that one. I have no clue. Does does like is there anything on Stack Overflow or or the internet help you kind of point in the right direction?
Yeah, I'm wondering what the heck this means. Attempt to index. That's the part that's got me with question marks in my head. Oh, thanks. Yeah, thank you for sharing, too. Always. Cool. You'll get it. I'm sure it's something really simple. It sounds like a really simple thing, you know? Maybe it's not obvious at first, but it's, pr it's just probably like one word or one letter even. Okay, here's try number one. Yeah, same thing in objective C, it's got the nil. Oh, PMC, maybe it's... Maybe lo love needs an initial value oh cool yeah we got some green grass right there it looks like yeah, well, here's some too. It's just not quite. So this one has some there. Hmm. All right, let's start with going with for the whole Y. I'll do the whole screen full of this this terrain blend. Yeah, see, that's kind of more what I was thinking, but I wonder why it started way... started out so high like that. Yeah, and I want to do a little dip too, so as it goes from one color to the other, there'll be like a little lip or an edge, one, one single pixel of darkness, like right there. And it would need to use the terrain value as well. It's kind of what I was imagining though, to start with. Okay, why would it be starting high? It should be, I want it to go in from the from the bottom, it comes, starts at the edge of the screen, goes to the middle, it would be at its maximum value-ish, and then it would go back up. So, what's going on there? Y is zero. Yeah. X is... Oh, no, 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 that's not it. There. Let me just log this out, see if this is this number is doing what I 
think it's supposed to be doing. Say XD percent. Oh. Percent D. Let's fix that warning. Warnings always bug me. Color C. Yeah, it suds. You totally can. Yeah, sprites and procedurally generated textures both work with textures. That's what they have in common. What's up, Act Cute Monster? I'm using Open Broadcaster. It's a free software for streaming on the Mac, and it's it works okay. For a long time, I had some bugs, like it didn't it didn't show the mouse cursor, and now it's still got some bugs. Like for most of the time, my lips never sync up with my voice, so it looks like I'm lip syncing, or it's just like my whole audio tracks off. So that's weird, but um. Other than that, it's great software. I'm really proud of the team, and they updated a lot. Okay, I'm kind of confused. So let me get, I also want to see the Y, XD, Y. Yeah, it's great. It works on Windows too. All right, yeah, XD's five. So why would it be? Okay, so these. Why would XD be going back, backwards? Hmm. Uh, no, it's not actually all in the OBS settings. Um, you have to use, you currently have to use this software called Soundflower. Awesome, good for you guys. Yeah, you have to get this thing called Soundflower to get to record your desktop audio, and I found it so problematic that it causes so many problems with audio and, and my stream and everything that I just don't even use it anymore. The sound you hear from my Mac is actually recorded off my, just my laptop speakers. That's why it sounds so tinny and stuff like that. But um, Soundflower is what you use to record system audio on Mac. And on Windows, it works way better. Like, they, I think you can just record your audio. Yeah, yeah, Soundflower, it just hasn't, it's because it hasn't been updated in so long. Really? When? What? What open? What version of Open Broadcaster were you using? It suds. Huh? Oh, yeah. No, the crow. Okay. So, what's going on? Is why is this X delta not increasing over time? It should be. So it should start at zero. That's fine. If y is less than size y02, add to the x delta. Okay, let's do this. XT before. Man, I'm having one of those days. 
my brain is just like it's like in off mode. I'm like trying to force my brain to do code today, but it really doesn't want to. So okay, x delta before. Come on, brain. You got it. You can do it. Hey, what's up, I real spy? Yeah, that's what I was just saying. The Windows one works, but the but the Mac one does not work for that. So bam bam. Yeah, so Mac users have always had kind of a worse open broadcaster. But um hopefully they'll fix it one day and be able to you could record your desktop audio straight from open broadcaster. That would be rad. But hi real spy, I'm working on procedurally generating a ground texture now. So you can see there's some brown here. And then there's this green coming in from the from this side. So I'm just trying to work on blending two types of ground textures together procedurally. So this is all done in, in code. And then you can also see there's a little bit of um, almost terrain height that it's using. Zero to five, five to zero. That's the part that's really confusing me. It shouldn't go back to zero at y equals one. Okay, I gotta set a breakpoint. Cool. Awesome, man. Good for you. That's rad. Cool. Well, please share your progress. I'm rooting for you. Oh, whoops. Sorry, guys. I reset the chat window. I meant to run the app. Same key. Same key command. That means all oh, y'all are gonna have different colors for your names. Ooh. All right, we got R, D, X, D before, zero. Y is less than size Y over 2. Great. Add to XD. XD is now 5. XD is less than 0. XD equals 0. Uh, huh. Okay. Alright, so next time, set another breakpoint there. Uh, it's about to. Yeah, that's one of the next things they're adding to it. I think in 3.9 or 4.0 or something like that, their, their goal is to have PS4 and Xbox One. I heard that through the grapevine. That might not be true, but... That's what that's the rumor I heard. Okay, so this time XD before is five. Right. XD is still currently five. If Y is less than size Y over two, great, it's still adding. XD plus equals D times Oh duh. Okay, that's supposed to be Zrand OF01. Alright, okay, so that's the problem with that. But still, it, sh it shouldn't be... It should be starting... Yeah, I don't know, I, I, like I said, I heard it through the grapevine from a, from a developer I trust. So, I... 
I can't confirm that with any article. There, okay, it works, yay. I guess it was just that DRAND FO1 thing that was making it do that. Okay, so obviously it's going way too far. Um, I wanted to go, I wanted to even have a chance to go backwards a little bit. Thanks, Suds. Cheers, man. Yeah, you're welcome, man. So obviously the D is too high, and let's start with a smaller D. First of all, uh, okay. It still got a little too far. So we're looking at more like maybe two max. Thanks, that cute. Thanks, man. I personally think it, it's got a, a ways to go still before it looks really awesome. I'm comparing it though to some of the my favorite artists out there, like um, Anton Kudin and his game Megasphere. That game blows me away every time I see it. Okay, so that's that's about where I wanted to come. Now I just wanted to look more random and jagged. So it needs to go, it has, it needs to have a chance to go backwards, but for that chance to be less than, to, for it to generally tend to go forward more than go backward. So. <laughs> uh, nice gif. I like I like hearing him without his voice. <laughs> the voice is so blaringly loud, but it's funny. You got to see it once before if you've never seen him do that that video. Okay, I guess we will use a DRAND F. And then we'll slide the D. D will be like a range. So we'll set the range to twice what it needs to be. And then. So if we're adding to the range, we want to like start with like. Uh, like half the range or something. Nice, good for you. Behavior trees are a great thing to start with. Steering forces, sound like you're making a racing game or something. Yeah, shaders are, are really awesome. You can get some, they're really, they're really wizardly. Like they take a lot of, a lot of doing. I think it works probably two or three weeks total, like total on in this game i've worked on this game for about eight months now and probably probably three of weeks of it were just on shaders so but it's so rewarding once you get your shaders done and it's your game looks so much better yeah yeah i heard it was it was coco studio x actually doing the work but you never know because like they they recently partnered with microsoft to do the windows phone part of it all. Microsoft actually helped them out and stuff, so I can definitely see Sony or Microsoft adding that. Or especially Microsoft, they already worked with them. Yeah, that's how I did the dynamic shadows. Uh, no, I'm definitely not going to get to do a blog. It takes so much time to write blog posts. And I'm a one-man, I'm a one-man project here. So I have 
very little time. I have to finish this game by December. That's when my funds run out from the Kickstarter. So I have no time whatsoever to do an, a blog. So this, this live stream is my blog. Oh, oh, nice. Okay, steering forces. Natural movement outside of A-star. All right. Cool. That's rad. I'm going to remember this because this, this might be something I'll add too. Sweet. Right, it's a vlog. It's vlog. It's vlog. It's big. It's happy. It's... It's video -y. Uh It's all on YouTube, man. The Dynamic Shadows one. Let me get you the exact video I did of the Dynamic Shadows. I think it was one of the first days. Yeah, it was within the first week. You can totally search for yourself here on my all my videos or whatever, but I'm pretty sure... Yeah, it's right here, day five. Very simple, man. Very simple technique. Just take the same sprite, flip it over, make it black, make it a little more transparent, and then skew it. Yo, what's up, Vlad? I'm working on procedurally generating this, this texture here. So I'm, I'm right in the middle of modifying this algorithm. So what I'm doing is I'm blending two colors together to create um, a sort of like a pathway um, from one area with one background color like brown to another area with a background color that's green. Okay, so if we're at the bottom, we want the range to be... Half the range. Plus the range times R. Let me think about that for a second. I think that's right. Oh, this needs to be in. This would be range. Okay, so x delta plus equals, so if the range is four, this is gonna be two plus four times the random number, right? So that's, no, it's just supposed to be minus two. And this should be four, a quarter of the range. Yeah, so okay. The range is now, the possibility of adding to xd is now minus 1 plus up to 4. So that's going to be minus 1 to 3. Yeah, okay, that's what I want for that one. And then this one is going to be plus equals something else. There you go. Yeah, you got the same game right here. Breakout, Arkanoid, and Pong. Same video game. Great, it is a great, a great simple game to create, totally. Highly recommend that one. But if you're into some other kind of game, maybe Tetris. Okay, so this is gonna be similar. So as we get towards the top of the screen, we want the range, we want it to be minus range times R. Plus range shifted down to. I think that's right. Oh yeah, I, I know you. I know that wasn't. I know you've created games before. I was talking about something else. Sorry. Guess the number game. <laughs> hey, Clone Geek, it's a custom one I made. Uh, let me give you the link though. I posted it online. Um, I just took the regular color scheme for Xcode and the the regular white scheme, and I just gave it a dark background and adjusted it a little bit. Um, and I think it's on my gists. Yeah, here it is. Default. Oh, 
Oh yeah, let's see if that worked. If this worked, then we'll have a nice random jitter going on on the edge there. Okay, well yeah, we got the jitter, but we don't got enough range. So let's try a bigger range to start with. Ooh, I like that. Here we go. Now we're starting to get it. Uh, but once again, see, it's starting with the green. Oh, I don't get that. Why? Oh. Oh, it might be upside down. I think it is. I think it's flipped. Textures are, oh. Oh, no wonder. That's what it totally explained why I had to do this weird janky code to get that working. Okay, okay. So I need to I need to redo my set color function to be y minus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Songbringer. <laughs> Not not as simple as Pong. Snake, right? The snake game. Oh, there you go. Episode three of season two, Rick and Mort. Rick and Morty. I haven't seen season two yet. I've only seen season one. What's your favorite what's your favorite Rick and Morty episode of all time at cute? What are we doing with our lives? Oh, it's that one? Oh, nice. Okay, I got to get on it, dude. I got to get on it. Rick and Morty's waiting. Interesting. Now I got to see it. Got to start seeing them tonight. There we go. Yay! See, it made these work now. So that as it's stepping upwards in its height terrain, it goes and gets this little lip. No, wait, that's... This needs to be back. This is all backwards. Still backwards. Hey, what's up, Fung? Okay, let's hope that this is right this time. <laughs> you might even need two dimensional rays. Three dimensional rays. Four dimensional rays. Oh, the complexity. Yeah, there we go. Okay, now it's working. Now we got. Now I don't have to do that janky stuff to flip it. Cool. Okay, so this whole time, the problem I had with my texture here was that it was Y flipped. I forgot the textures are that way. Okay, so I wish, I kind of want to turn off all the ground texture, or all everything. Let's go into debug mode, we'll be able to see the ground texture a little bit more clearly. <laughs> oh man, your teeth hurt? Ah, oh, it sucks. Oh, there you go. Yeah, you could just do a Ludum Dare and join some team that has an idea already. Okay, what? 
See, we're getting this pattern, right, where it's barely, okay, it must be that one of my, one of the, um, Sweet. Vlad, if you end up doing Ludum Dare, we, we all want to see what you make, man, and what team you're part of and everything. Okay, so it must be this, where it's like, if Y is less than this, uh, uh, let's try this, where it's always... It's always doing that kind of addition. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I don't really want to do an in-game thing. I, like, I, I want to save myself the time of not trying to do too many like in-game tools and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, my text is, um, is it's, it's not a compile flag, and it's not a runtime flag. It's neither of those. It's just a setting. It loads the game. I don't have to recompile anything if I, if I load this. It's just, it's just data. So it runs it, I guess it's a runtime flag in a sense, yeah. There, okay, yeah, so this was just adding. This is a very good add, 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 add. So XD plus equals minus range. Yeah, but yeah, it just take. I know, I know it's gonna take time to create. So, and that was really, really quick, right? All I had to do was go here and change that to one to turn on my debug. I don't even have to recompile. So there's really no waste of time there. That's cool. Okay, range, oh man, got a crazy headache all of a sudden. Sorry guys, this is definitely one of my, my crazy low energy days. I'm having these weird fluxes of stuff going on in my head. Um, all right, range minus R, times R. Why is this one going outwards so much? Hmm. Let's check out the values. Right, it goes from zero to zero, zero to five, five to four, four to 11, 11 to eight, eight to 10. Yeah, so it's just generally trending outward forever because we've, we're only using that algorithm. So this, why does this one trend towards increasing when it should have the biggest part of the range being negative? Oh, once again, oh man, I confused myself with that twice today. DRAN F01, yeah, you fixed it. What was it, man? What was it? Nice, dude. Yeah, isn't that great when you get these soaring moments where you're like, you do something like that and it works. Sweet, look at this. This is where looking better. This is kind of, now it's at least a triangle. This one looks a little nicer. This one had a nice jitter to it.
So let's make this a float range. And then here it's going to be times, well, this was a quarter. Yeah, okay, we still got the same exact behavior. Good. Now, let's try, let's try 40%. Yeah, it's entirely procedurally generated, and that's on a tile level, too. So it's not like it's randomly arranging rooms or anything. It's actually going to the, the tile level and creating a randomly generated world. And then here's what you can see some of its output. Here's the, the actual screen level. This is the overworld. Here's like one of the dungeons it creates. So there's a lot more to this game than... Oh, you didn't put a function. Ah! Let's see if that, I want it to jitter a little bit more. Hmm. Yeah, let's do a little bit more jitter by doing like a bigger range that it can possibly do. And let's turn off draw debug so we can see what it should be looking like. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. More like this. Sweet. Here's a really long one. Wow. Hmm, here's one that kind of looks weird. Huh. Yeah, totally, right, but the, the great thing about this is you've built some confidence with what you just did, you know? You build some confidence in yourself that you can do it. And even though it was a small mistake and you kind of feel stupid right now, you're going to have those kind of moments more and more. You know what I mean? You'll you'll have more moments where you'll feel stupid. But try and respect yourself. Try and feel that. Focus on that confident part that you get when you when you when you just triumphed, right? Focus on the triumph. Don't try. Don't focus on the feeling stupid part. And that's what will accelerate your progress as a programmer. I gotta get a drink of water real quick. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You got the bug fixer achievement.
All right, well, where do you go with this next? I guess I could do a Y, I could do a Y version. Oh. What's up, Canada's amazing? Man. Sorry guys, I got a crazy headache today. I might have to stop the stream early today. <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah, exactly, Grogge. Grogge? Yeah. That's right. You got to focus on what is real or what is real for you. You know what? And that's why I always say focus on what excites you because that tends to be what is real, you know? All right. Okay. Enough code for today. I'm gonna work on some more, some more palm trees, stuff. What's up, baby? <laughs> I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Okay, yeah. All right, let's just, I'm going to do some art now because this is uh, too much code. It's making my head hurt. I'm whiny today. I'm a whiny bitch. That's what I am. All right, switching to the graphics tablet, gonna get into art mode. Uh, personally, I mean, it depends on your game. Totally depends on your game. If you think, if you think your your game can pull enough the success you desire with only one platform, then you know maybe that's the right thing for you to do. But personally, I think that. Almost all games these days are cross-platform, and you're kind of hurting yourself in the long run if you're committing yourself to only one platform, because you're really hurting the potential of your game. Like when you look at profit, for especially when it comes to profit, you know. Oh yeah, right. Maybe you need some something, something quicker. Oh, you want to? Oh, you want something slower? Ah. Have I seen Black Ops Three? No, I haven't. Okay, let's get back to this overworld. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna texture, I'm gonna make this tree look better. Dance bringer. <laughs> oh, we got so many bringers. There's been so there's been chats where we're all the whole chat was just like this bringer, that bringer. Thong bringer is one of them that's really funny. Hey, what's up, Tabby? <laughs> yeah, totally. RPGs are great for making slowly. 
Definitely. Uh, so Red Penguin, are you talking to me or are you talking to Vlad? Uh, okay, so I'm gonna t I'm gonna make this a little darker. A little, I'm gonna shade this up a bit. Mm, yeah. Yeah. That would be cool. But it sounds complicated. Especially for this art perspective. This perspective is very Zelda 1-esque. That's the whole point of this game. Is it's meant to be sort of a Zelda 1-ish look. So adding parallax to the trees would be kind of weird because also the player never moves that much in his X and Y. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, totally. Oh, I know exactly how you feel there, Vlad. Totally. You're a creator, man. You're a creator at heart. That's so cool. That's why that's why I do these live streams cuz I want to connect with people like you cuz I mean I I know a lot of creators, right? Of people that are creative, but I don't meet a lot of creators that work in the game development field that much in my regular life. So I love doing these live streams. I love connecting with you guys. I'm really excited to, that we have met, we've e-met. What's up, Warpow? You can, man, it takes a long time to learn. There's a lot to learn in game development, but if you really want to do it, you can. Nah. <laughs> right? Yeah, oh my god. Definitely. <laughs> Funny point, right? Why are you saying you can't do it by yourself? That's a little better. Uh, well, you're also trying to make one of the hardest games you could possibly make. You maybe maybe you should try starting. Yeah, exactly what PMC is saying here. Start smaller. 
It's definitely not as hard as it used to be. Oh my god, I can speak from direct experience there. I started making games in 1995, and that was right before Windows 95 came out. And um, man, games were a lot harder to make back then. In DOS, you had to use interrupts just to get the current time value for your game. And now getting a time value is like a one-liner. So there's so many benefits to coding today. What's up, Ethan? There you go. Sweet. I love these kind of games. 1942 is one of my favorites. This is cool. I like it, Vlad. Yes, definitely. Yeah, War Pal, seriously. Listen to this right here. Start with something without networking. It's one of the hardest parts of game development. It's so true. Writing multiplayer games is so much more difficult than creating single player games. What's up, Defuxel? Yeah, I definitely say yes on using C++. That's my language of choice. I'll, I'm gonna stick with C++ till the day I die. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I know what you mean. Totally. Especially if your work revolves around the software development industry already or any kind of IT or whatever. What's up, careful moose? Oh yeah, extra credits. So good. <laughs> Just do it. Yeah, I'm sure this is awesome. All of extra credits videos are great. Nice, right on. I'm glad I got it right. Oh, oh, I hear ya. Oh man, what part of the slot machines? Like the hardware, software? Warpal, why don't you why don't you start meeting some people then? Do a Ludum Dare. I'll that'll you'll definitely meet people with a Ludum Dare. What the hell? Yeah, I did. I learned from a book as well. Defuxel. Yep, I learned a long time ago though. The book I read is no longer exists, but um, I definitely think you're on the right path. I think this is, this is the best, per, in my opinion, the best language to learn. I would, I would, personally, I would start with C first. That's how I did it. And it helped me learn C and C++ slowly. You know, C is, a, you don't learn objects and some more of the complex things. So you get some of the more basics, but yeah. There you go. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I hear you. They're kind of like, right? Not that exciting. Sort of cheesy games. <laughs> uh, 
Yes, exactly. That's what, yes, it's true, man. If you know C, you pretty much know the basics for any other language. Highly, highly recommend C and, of course, C++. Yes, definitely. Yeah, Unity is a great engine. And if you want to start with something a little more basic, maybe you want to do Game Maker. But Unity, if you want to do 3D and more advanced stuff. Thanks, man. Yeah, you guys got to check out Tappy's game. Dude, the game they're working on is great. Oh, here's what it was doing. It was putting it on the child of that layer. Here we go. Okay, so I can... I'm just making another palm tree. Or a copy of this palm tree so I can animate it. And I'm going to move some of these tree limbs a bit. we go okay so let's see how that looks in the game animated let's just move i've got two frames here one frame the other frame and then that makes it so it's animated brings a little life to the overworld so i'm gonna go to sheets common overworld and make sure it says all user slices yeah totally yeah, I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna learn OpenGL, that's kind of like the lowest level you can go with. I mean, it's gonna be very helpful no matter what. But most game engines kind of do all the OpenGL for you, it's like SDL does. All right, Cube Monster, see you, man. Nice, man. Yeah, totally. I definitely agree. GN's CEO, man. Game Maker is great to start with as a beginner. And then you can move on to things like maybe Unity or something. Yeah. Okay, let's see how that looks. Let's see if we got a nice palm tree now that moves a little bit and looks a little better. Yeah, cool. Cool. It almost looks like there's some monkeys in the tree or something that are making it do that. All right. So yeah, I don't I don't really want to work on the code anymore with this procedural generation because what I think I want this to do is for this yellow edge right here to blend into this green edge too, but more on the top and the bottom. So it would be kind of the the inverse of this. So these edges need to blend together basically. But it'll get there. I love the fire sword. It's one of my favorites. <clears throat> Oh, well, what about Unity? Um, I'm using LLVM with Xcode. Xcode comes with this compiler called LLVM, and it's pretty good. But on Windows, I use Visual Studio to compile the Windows version. Yeah, totally. Yeah, Vampy Vampire's got some great advice here. Graphic scale, or there's Pix Edit, PYX. Oh, right. Oh, I've never even heard of code blocks myself. Oh, well then, 
Well, then, CEO, I would recommend going and trying out enough game engines until you find one you're, you you want to use. If you if you don't like C Sharp and you don't want to learn GML, then play with some engines that don't use either of those until you find one that looks like a good one to start with. And I think that's the best way to get started with game development, because like you really got to start with an engine. You got to get familiar with the engine too, and that takes time. Oh yeah, the lightning weapon. Yeah, I'll show you the lightning weapon. Let's go use it too in the in like a level. So. Yeah, so you guys are, that are just joining the stream, I'll, I'll show you what it looks like inside the dungeons, too. There's there's dungeons in this game. There's tons of items and stuff. So I'll switch to, from the fire sword to the lightning sword. So the lightning sword's cool because it can strike multiple areas at once, but it's random, right? So... It hits enemies, but then it randomly strikes somewhere else on the screen. So it might hit an enemy, and it might hit you. So it's kind of a it's kind of a grab bag type of item. It might you might hurt yourself with a lightning sword, but it can be really powerful. That was a hard room. Oh, I got worked fast. But yeah, you get the you get the point of what the uh, the lightning sword's like. Uh, nope, Unreal does not use C plus. Oh wait, yeah, yeah, Unreal does. Sorry, I was thinking of Unity. Yeah, Live GDX is great. Uh, Jury Thun, I'm I'm gonna release this game in about January, probably maybe sometime between January and March. March, if enough people pre-order the game, I can release it a little bit later, like March, and that would be preferable because there's so much left to do. This game is like barely. I mean, it's about halfway done at this point, but there's so much left to do. Uh, War Pal, well. Um, that's what I do this for. These are like lessons and you can go and look at my YouTube channel for every single day of this game's development. You can go all the way back to day one and teach yourself by watching the videos. I guess we could draw another tree. Now that I've drawn one, I could draw another one. Oh yeah, I think I, I think I saw this video before. To start sesame, I say open sesame out loud. Open sesame. Sesame recognizes my face. Oh no, I definitely and haven't seen this one. one. My head gestures are translated to the cursor movement. That's awesome. This is like the future. So cool. Oh, there's a link right there on my info, but... I can now read my email, for instance, by staying still on the Gmail application icon and selecting the green tab icon. Wow, so do you wink to, like, click? I select a certain email and tap it to read it. I can now tap the back icon to go back. 
close the phone, I say Sesame close phone out loud. Sesame close phone. Tap it to read it. And selecting the green tap icon. This is awesome, Vlad. I can now read my email, for instance, by staying still on the Gmail application icon and selecting the green tap icon. I select a certain email and tap it to read it. So wait, how do you tap? I can now tap the back icon to go... Uh, Juryathon, no, this game is not out yet. It's coming out in, it's coming out in March. Say, Sesame close phone out loud. Sesame close phone. I think it's the one I saw before here, was it? Yeah, that's the one I saw before. So cool, man. It's such a great thing for the world. And for the future. It's so futuristic. Okay. I, was, I don't know if I was, like, happy with how saturated this came out. I kind of want this... These leaves to be more saturated, actually. Okay, I'm going to just try saturating them a little more. See you, PMC. What program? I'm using Xcode, but I'm the game engine I'm using is called Coco Studio X. Uh, game Maker. I'd say Game Maker is the most basic game program out there. Oh, so you basically just stay in place on something. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, Warpel, Game Maker has a free version, yes. You can check it out, man. Just go to, go to their website. No, I, I'm not worried about there being too much movement. There's already, there wasn't enough movement before. So the whole point is to kind of give everything a little bit of life. And if I want to, if I want to decrease the movement, I can just decrease the, um, the amount that this runs its animations at. So there's a delay I do in code um, that determines all that. So let's go back to the overworld. Yes, the game engine I'm using is free. It's totally free. Even the software I use, Xcode, is free. Okay, yeah. Let's see if these look a little bit more... Yeah, I like them a little bit more saturated like that. I kind of want the trees to be a little more brown. Hmm. Ah. 
What's up, Taco? What would I consider this game type? It's like Zelda. It's actually an action adventure RPG. That's what I would call it. It's this game I just called Coco Studio X. There you go. Thanks, Jonah. Hmm. Yeah, well, I know I like to I like to reach out to people though. Help people out. Uh I don't know. I've never used RPG Maker myself. You could try it though. You can't find Game Maker? Here you go. Man, my brain is like so messed up today. I can barely code, barely even make art. It's crazy. I'm doing this crazy cleanse right now. So that's why I kind of have this, this weird energy. But um, let's see, I could just do this. Hey, there we go. I can select these pixels and those pixels. Saturation, saturation. Uh, Hi, Rule Spy. Yeah, I'm, I'm already doing that. Well, I mean, not highlights, but I do time lapse videos. So they're not really highlights, but they're they're the closest I'll probably ever come to highlights. Cause it's oh my gosh, it would take so much time to actually make a highlights video, and I, I barely have enough time to make this game. You know what I mean? So. Um, here's my time lapse videos. 
speed game development. So yeah, every every week or every month or so, I go and I compile all the videos into a time lapse, and it kind of gives you the same thing a highlight would, except there's just no there's not any of my talking or whatever. So. Yeah, I would love I would love to have that, but I just don't have the time to make it. So I mean if if there's a fan out there that wants to do something like that, feel free. You totally have my permission to make a highlights video. Yeah, of course. Alta Vista. It was like better than Google for a while. <laughs> yes, right? All right, so yeah, this is going to be about it for today's video. Today what I worked on was procedurally generating the ground texture of the game. And now I, I worked on drawing some of these these trees. So I'll just give a recap of what kind of got done today, and then it's pretty much it for today's video. Um, but no worries if you guys are new to my stream or whatever. I stream just about every single day, and I stream about this same time every day. It's late afternoon for me. It's Pacific time, so I stream about... 4 p.m. Pacific time or something like that. So this is what I was working on today. I was creating these different colored ground textures, right? And these are procedurally generated. So I actually create these in code. And that's that's what I was working on is blending these two areas together. What I'd like to do is be able to, to make it so now they have a little bit of shadow. So, so for example, this brown area will have a tiny bit of shadow while it transitions into the green. So it looks like it's higher than the green is. And the same thing back here, um, as the brown goes into the green, there'll be a shadow on the top part of the green, the bottom lip of the, the brown, so that you get a nice little three-dimensional feeling, almost like this little lip right here. So yeah, that's what I'm working on right now. I'm, I'm working on creating some more art that hopefully looks more jungly, and I noticed that creating green ground really just really helps to make it look more jungly right off the get-go so yeah that's what I'll be working on this week is just more art and more stuff for the overworld I'm trying to make it look more like this um, like using all the data that I've already been generating what's up why is this not working go to the desktop I won't go to my desktop oh never mind um, but anyways yeah I'll be back tomorrow and um, <clears throat> Um, yeah, so if you like this game, you can feel free to pre-order it. It comes out, this is called Songbringer. There it goes. It's called Songbringer. It comes out, like, January to March, something like that. Um, and I'm the only guy that does everything here. I do the code, the art, the music. So, it's a solo project, but I'm not quite alone because I got you guys. So, thanks for watching. appreciate you all, and I'll be back again tomorrow.